activity that he could identify being consistent in all these films and being specific uh, of a, um, let's say, Romanian uh, sensitivity or a different sensitivity from the North American one. Um, maybe a way to look at people that is different, maybe to, a way to look at human relationships that is different. Um, I don't know if you identified any of this um, a colleague of ours in a recent book wrote about European film that um, uh, there is some kind of characteristics of European film. Uh, one being um, an ironic distance, um, another one being nostalgia. Um, then there are others that I cannot remember, but it was very interesting. So would you, is there any of this, say, European film touch in this film students, students, film, student films? Yeah, I'm not sure I can identify a, a cultural sensitivity, but I think there's something interesting happening in many of these films and also in Death of Mr. Lazarescu and uh, another Romanian feature I've seen, California Dream, where um, our students at York University, they, they very much struggle with what to make a film about, what kind of story to tell. Um, a lot of them are very young students and Frankly, they don't have anything to say yet about anything. They just are excited about being in film. Um, so these films, what, what I think is consistent in them and, and these, these two features I mentioned as well, is that in a way they're not really so focused on plot in terms of cause and effect series of events. They, they set up a situation and then in terms of plot, in terms of uh, you know, events unfolding, not much happens really. Things kind of break down and uh, become somewhat stagnant in terms of a linear plot, but lots of stuff is happening that's, that's much more domestic, or things are happening in the relationships between characters, uh, like on the Staircase uh, film, the first one we saw, or in the in the, uh, the one called Late, about the, the guy to, trying to deliver the, the report about the incident at the school. Or even the one documentary synopsis, the what happens in the office once they get to the office. Um, you know, if you, were to, if you were to sum up the synopsis of what these films are about, you would, you would have very few words because not much happens in them in terms of plot. But what's happening instead is a very interesting dynamic between the characters and and the way people treat each other and how people respond to, you know, uh, to a situation when presented with it. Like, what do you do when there's a dead body next to the garbage chute? And then how the different characters coming out of their apartments react to the situation. So, I don't know if that's distinctly Romanian, but it does seem to be consistent with a lot of, you know, uh, Andre mentioned at the beginning, the focus of the festival this year will be on contemporary films, films that are being made right now in Romania, the films that are winning awards. And there does seem to be some continuity there in terms of that approach to narrative, that the story, the story is uh, a platform where characters can respond to each other rather than a st story that has a distinct middle beginning and ending and, and things are resolved at the end. Things are not resolved, but we have spent some time with these characters and, and, and found the dynamic between them very interesting. Yeah. Um, I, I was just wondering if perhaps uh, there's a difference between European films and uh, American, more particular uh, US films, because most European films are, are heavily subsidized, whereas what we perceive as American films is mostly Hollywood. Uh, and uh, they're big productions, and they're expected to make money, so uh, they are perhaps more uh, more entertainment than art, whereas European movies are more art than they are entertainment. Could that be a... Yeah, I mean, I'm going to let Teresa answer that, but in terms of U.S. versus European films, but uh, one thing I'll say about student films is all of these films, I think, are shot on 35-millimeter film, 
And uh, the majority of them. At York, it's a real struggle to try to keep the students working on film, even 16 millimeter, even super 8 millimeter. Um, they, they tend to see all of this technology as dinosaur, old technology. They're much more excited about new technology of the, the video cameras and digital <laughs> cinema and uh, you know HD, and they, they want to use all this new stuff, which is cheap as well, because it's just tape or, or memory cards. So there is a financial uh, obstacle to them shooting on film. And I guess, I don't know how much of an obstacle that is in, in the Eastern European film schools, where I think they are much more subsidized, as you said. But it's fantastic to see students shooting on 35 millimeter, and rarely ever happens in Canada, and maybe in the States where there's richer film schools. But it's a it's a very long debate, and there are people waiting to ask questions, and it's really a very complex topic to European film, North American film. However, what I think that happens is that Europe identify it's a lot of its culture also through films. It's a cultural act. It's, a, it's, a, it's an act of identity cinema. Um, as you identify yourself, North America, because of the vicinity of Hollywood, is an act of entertainment. It's less important the cultural identity, it's more important the business aspect, the industry aspect, and the definitely uh, money-making aspect. So I think this would be, but it's a very complex and complicated topic. Um, sure, as Lawrence said, um, um, there is no such a thing as t t total entire evil. And the communist system, what did good was that this very, very, very expensive um, universities such as film, film directing, filmmaking, um, um, was entirely subsidized by the government with everything with equipment, with 35 millimeters cameras, with 30, 35 millimeter film stock. So I went through the system and, um, and what they try to do is to preserve as much as possible. I don't know for how long this will be possible since it's totally unrealistic um, business-wise, uh, but uh, to preserve this um, I will use the word elitist, but in a positive way, the elitist approach to filmmaking and culture. Um, now students have to pay to tuition, but there were also six uh, spots every year which are free, tuition free, and which are um, occupied by students after passing very, very um, uh, exigent and, and testing exams. So there are six free spots and, and another 12, 10 spots that are based on tuition. Um, however, the tuition is quite uh, affordable and also um, um, the school provides the film stock, continues to provide the film stock. Although I spoke last night to the recently arrived recent graduate from from the film school, student who was bitterly complaining about their conditions over there. So there is no such a thing as the paradise under the sun, because uh, if we, you talk to our York students, they will bitterly complain about the conditions they have at York. So. Uh, it's a very, uh, hold your thought. 
Um, it's an extremely interesting uh, observation, sir, and I'm, I'm glad you, you, you mentioned it, because indeed, you are perfectly right, what happens with this, this new wave of Romanian cinema, in fact, it's the old wave of new wave of Czech cinema. Uh, because um, the conditions in Romania, as many of you might unfortunately know, the censorship of cinema was so heavy and so draconian that um, the Romanian cinema was practically non-existent in terms of, of, of um, truth, in terms of uh, interest of the stories, in terms of um, um, aesthetic and artistic uh, artistic quest. So, with this celebration, with this 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 opening, um, definitely he, Romania is now where Czech cinema was in the 60s, um, um, and obviously I think it's a normal phase. They have to go through this kind of um, um, black humor, um, this this very um, um, or like ordinary people, uh, the little men, um, the, the insignificant that brought on the screen becomes the significant. And these characters are not aware how ridiculous they are sometimes, how um, um, maybe poor-minded they are other times, but how human they are in the same time. And this is this case of um, a lot of humanity, uh, which if people know, uh, the first films of Milos Forman, the, the, the fireman ball, and the uh, uh, loves of a blonde, it's, it's the same style where you look with a lot of, um, that the filmmaker looks with a lot of humanity and comprehension and compassion to the struggle of um, his care, his her characters who are not aware uh, practically of the um, ridiculousness and uh, of the tragic comic of the situations they, they are in. That's pretty much the approach of that first film at the, the, on the stairway. Um, and uh, also in Mr. Lazarescu, which I think that people who saw the film could recognize that um, there are many, um, how do you say this in English, the, people who, the followers, many followers among the students who try to copy stylistically um, Mr. Lazarus' style. Uh, there was a question here. Yeah, just maybe a note, we always, uh, let's say, when we compare it to North America, but uh, let's say in Canada, I see a difference between movies made in Quebec in terms of comparison to movies made in other words, we always forget that kind of uh, island. Although it's not necessarily that the French, like the Euro, might be more Italian than French, Ireland. But how would uh, it's immigrant say, Italian in Quebec? It's Quebec yeah, one. Yeah, okay, yeah. this is your turn. This is this, Canada. This is your turn. No, no, no. It's Canada. It's Canada. We both actually, <laughs> actually, Lawrence and I, we met um, um, uh, many, many years ago when I first arrived. We're, we're not married. <laughs> <laughs> we, we met many, but, but his wife's name is Teresa. So um, we, we met many years ago when I first came to Canada and I, I, I went to Concordia University and he was a student in filmmaking, well, it went to, in fact, to improve my English. Um, and he was a student at Concordia, so we met there and then years later, absolutely by, by, by pure chance, we became um, colleagues at York University, so we didn't stop. So, um, uh, Quebec, it's yours. I think it's hers, but uh, I'll, say, I'll say a little bit about it. I think you're right that we, um, in English Canada, we tend not to talk about Quebec cinema in the same way. Um, and I think it's because it's a much more vibrant and self-sustaining industry in Quebec with a, with a captive audience and Quebec films do remarkably well in Quebec and in other Francophone countries and in a way the Quebec cinema doesn't compete with Hollywood cinema in the same way that the rest of Canada feels like it's competing with Hollywood cinema for screen time on, you know, 
in Canadian cinemas. So um, there are two very, very different things, and, and uh, people talk about the rest of Canada as one thing and Quebec as something else because they're, they're, they come from such different traditions and, and the sense of humor is different, the aesthetic is different. Um, but uh, in terms of comparing the two or linking them to Romanian cinema, I think that actually the point is very well made because I personally feel a lot of kinship with Quebecois cinema when looking at this <clears throat> um, new wave of Romanian films. I mean, Quebecois characters and relationships and um, um, sensitivity and connections are very similar to... Um, there is this sense of self... Um, irony that at, at the poking fun and at oneself, not taking themselves that seriously or so seriously, um, and in the same time um, trying to look at the truth of, of human condition, less of how entertaining that is, more how truthful that is, and uh, what us, the audience, can learn seeing other people's struggles and and um, you know problems and pain. So in this in this way, there is also this approach or their interest for the little man. That the, 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 I remember it was a very beautiful film which I've seen in Quebec. A documentary. Uh, the title stayed with me forever, and it's the title. It was a documentary. The title was Ceux qui ont le pas léger ne laissent pas de traces. The ones that have a light step do not leave traces behind. And this, this, is the, this is the world in these films. The people who step lightly, meaning um, the anti-heroes in the language of Let's immediately, uh, it's again very interesting uh, commentary, let Laura's reply to answer to your question. But I want to make a point, again very interesting. I think that in the films of the new wave Czech cinema, and the Hungarians too, and the Polish too, there was more about a system, an absurd system, that imposed absurd situation to which people had absurd reactions. That was the, more or less the, the setting. It was the absurdity of a system that gave birth to very bizarre and absurd situations where people would have to react spontaneously and also in many occasions absurdly to what was imposed on them. It changed 
you are perfectly right. The system is not that absurd any longer. Uh, so what's happening now, I think, in this films that we were talking before, there is a certain level of brutality and ugliness and bleakness and um, moralless and lawless, which is not given by the large frame of, we don't know where it's coming from. We do not have the same political, social political reference any longer. So it's among the people. It's entrenched already. Maybe Raluca, who's recently arrived from them there, can, um, and she has a degree in screenwriting, but also in film writing. finished uh, my uh, university, uh, my film university. I have a bachelor in screenwriting and uh, uh, I know very well uh, the actors that played in these movies and also the directors, the screenwriters. Um, my question was, uh, do you think this, what, what we see here, what we saw tonight, uh, was actually supposed to have happened uh, right after the 1990, probably uh, up to 1998 or up to 2000. Was this the period that uh, these movies was, were supposed to be uh, made? Because uh, you probably, you, you said yourself, uh, this is a, a business, this is a, a something power that comes from within us, but uh, these are movies made uh, by a totally new gener generation. So It why? feels that it's a new Well, I, I... Well, this is a good question. It's an existential question. We can answer why us who know the answers, but in general, um, there is no, there is a certain sadness and it's a certain lack of, of luminosity, of, of hope, of um, um, purity, I would say, in this, in this, you see there are very few uh, entirely positive heroes. Um, um, there, there is a heaviness in in the way these people live, in the way they, they, their relationships, a certain um, uh, 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 casual vulgarity in the way they talk to each other. Um, well, and these are, these are young um, artists who uh, absorb the reality and reinterpret it uh, through a very fresh and young eye. So this might be the society around them. This might be the, 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 the human landscape that uh, surrounds them and that uh, feeds their creativity. Um, we cannot do anything but acknowledge. Uh, they don't look like films made in a society 20 years ago. They look like made very now and, and recent. So, but Lawrence has to answer to yeah, I would just say in response to, to your question um, or your comment that following on what Dreja was saying about the, the films from the past which were more absurdist and responding to an oppressive era, um, the film, the documentary synopsis film, I really think is quite exceptional. Uh, if, if a student came to me with that idea, they would say, okay, I want to make a film about a guy graduating from film school gets his first chance to direct for television. But that's not what the film's about at all. And, and, and that's what impressed me about it, that the student has something to say, the filmmaker has something to say with this film. And, uh, you know, the opening scenes, we see the two guys riding in the car together from the back. And the one guy sounds very cocky and confident about his directing abilities and his experience and how strong his CV is. 
and the other guy's mostly talking about you know his brother who things didn't work out with and and he's he's got this sort of paternalistic feeling towards this substitute but then what the film's really about is what happens in the copy shop and what happens is they go around that office and you know it's a dog eat dog world and they're trying to exploit connections and you know nepotistic contacts and uh and they, they face so much hostility and and everybody's protecting their turf and you know this is the kind of poisonous post communist capitalist state of romania i presume now i don't know um and then the last shot the guy he gets the job and He's left in the hallway there, and, and now he looks sort of weak and vulnerable, and, and yet he wanted to make the kind of powerful social documentary about the homeless people, and, and he's been reduced to, okay, make this commercial piece, and, but it's not a success for him. And so that film, I think, very much speaks to what you're talking about, that, there, that there's this uh, bleak brutality and casual vulgarity and... Uh, you know, maybe it's not responding specifically to the 1990s, but it's responding to what I presume is the situation there now. On the other hand, on the other hand, we were talking about this film. Imagining this situation here in Canada with a recent graduate from Europe, from U of T, from Ryerson, wherever, going to apply for a job and getting his first gig as a director, like the character in the film did, which is unthinkable, un unthinkable. As, as a recent graduate who goes into somebody's office and, and leaves half an hour later with uh, a directing job for a TV episode, come on. It's because the Romanian film industry is so small. Right? All the actors are in the movies, everybody knows each other. <laughs> it's, too, it's a tribal culture, yes. Lights and it's part coming from the dogma movement. If you um, now this uh, approach, this um, um, Nordic filmmakers in '95 write a manifesto of this anti-Hollywood style where lighting would be natural and no embellishment and no frills. Uh, that Hollywood used the uh, the spectator, spectator's eye with. Uh, but but I think that nowadays this style became a mannerism as well because everybody picks up the camera and pretends documentary cine verite style. I'll capture the light life unarranged, uh, un, um, spontaneously. This is not for the camera or for my frame. This is how it is, and I happen to be here with a camera and get the glimpse of a reality that unfolds in front of the lens. Uh, it's, a, it's stylistically, it's a new style, comes from dogma, it's an anti-Hollywood movement, but it became in time also very mainstream, yeah, formalized. Uh, yeah, I have another question, it's for uh, Laura. Um, you mentioned that you were working 
do you think from your point of view, from a Canadian's point of view, that a Romanian cinematography needs, um, let's say, a, a new dogma, like you uh, talked about Dogma 95? Do you think it needs uh, uh, new laws to be uh, less uh, wild, you know what I mean <laughs> by wild, mm -hmm. and uh, more... Um, um, focused on the audience more than on the stories, the the soul, the searching, the, the light, the metaphysics. You, you want to say more plot oriented, yeah. more entertaining yeah. rather than yeah. um, uh, turn towards itself. Um, and not, not really uh, uh, turn towards uh, uh, gaining money from making movies. No, no, but no, but more entertaining as in storytelling. Yes, and yes. So what is your opinion? Thank you. Well, I wouldn't want to say what I think Romanian cinema needs or, or should change or should do. Um, I think that the, the aesthetic that some of these films embrace is appropriate to the fast-paced action of what's happening. They're following characters through spaces. Um, I don't find it irritating because, you know, we're all used to this kind of thing. I mean, Woody Allen did it with husbands and wives 20 years ago. Um, and, uh, and among these films, there are more stylized, formal, static frames, like the, the one in the, the sand pit with the angel. And, you know, this one is very, very preoccupied with uh, the framing and the composition and, and where the camera's placed. Even the one, um, the, one of the last ones, the chamber music, seemed very much that the, the the director and the cinematographer said, you know, let's come up with a scene so that we can shoot it from up above and let's do the Dutch angle over here. And, you know, so the, the framing was very much a part of the, was, was an excuse for making the film. Let's do it so that we can play with uh, camera movements and, and framing. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm not a scholar of Romanian cinema. I, I, I've seen these films, so I, I can't say what I think the national cinema should, which direction it should take, uh, I would leave that to the expert here. Mm. Uh, a question about the color. Uh, the color is very drab for the most part. And bright colors tend to be associated with the absurdist elements. Mm -hmm. Is that a coincidence or is that something that Right. I'm very happy that I can address an absurd situation in Canada as well, where everything is so organized, under control, and not subjected to absurdity. The projector is very old, and <laughs> the projection was kind of um, you know, suffering a little bit, and desaturated the colors. When we watched this um, films on a TV set, the, the colors were richer and more... Um, so, but of course, you, you are right. There is also an aesthetic of the cinema, a new aesthetic of the cinematography, right? Where this, <clears throat> there is a kind of a flatness of the lighting. If you have in your mind the ho Hollywood style, right, with the backlight, with this aura, with um, reflections, with the lights in the eye of the actor, so the eyes will, will uh, shine and everything is well lit and slickly lit. Um, these realities, bleak, sad, poor, hopeless, and so on, there is a certain evenness of the lighting. The light goes evenly. It's not playing with shadow and um, light. It's not playing with color of school. It's not playing um, the, on, the, on the foreground, background. It's some kind of an evenness, as if all these people, the people that the stories talk about, are caught into the same uh, dead end, no escape, uh, 
there is no differentiation. We are still here on the stairway, uh, a bunch of idiots um, trying to cope to the best of our ability with a very tragic event and in the process we are silly and selfish and um, 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 sometimes dehumanized and so on. So the lighting is evening everything. But it's, it's a good observation. Um, the, the school, the film school, has a, a section of um, <clears throat> special uh, department in cinematography where for four years the students learn nothing but nothing else than shooting. And they still shoot on film, and the shooting on film um, it's still more complicated in terms of lighting and the concept of, of lighting, which in fact defines the art of film um, pretty much so. Uh, it's visual, it's the image. The, the, the image talks through the light and shadow. So these kids for four years learn cinematography in depth, in all aspects, from all angles, um, uh, from physics, optics, up to um, um, theories of color and uh, so. Um, of course, they, they learn how to think the film image in conjunction with the content, content and with the storytelling. Um, it's not, we should because it's, um, you saw that black and white film, um, how uh, harsh the contrast right, between black and white. Um, it, this is something that was thought about by the cinematographer, it was planned, was tested to, to give the feeling of this harsh contrast, black and white, there are no many gray tones. And why is that? Because the story is very ugly. The, the, the relationship between these two characters is ugly. I, I was just curious, um... I noticed the director's name is Pintivia. Is, is there any? No. no. Okay. Where is our host? Anyone? Step down. Anyone? Any other question? Andre, I think we are pretty much close to wrapping up. Uh, okay. I'll let the, obviously, thanks you. Thank you for staying for the Q and A for our uh, screening. And once again, to remind you that our fundraiser is taking place next week on Saturday at Hard House, which is just a couple of meters away from this. Uh, from uh, and for the festival, the tickets once again are on sale for Boogie and for Cold Waves. Um, if you haven't filled out your ballots yet, please do so now and enter your emails so that you can uh, enter the contest with um, so your tickets for the, for the screenings. And we will announce a full program for the festival within the upcoming weeks, uh, most likely by the beginning of, uh, of January. <laughs> so, and uh, thank you once again to uh, Teresa Bata and Alice Gould for coming. <laughs> and a big thank you to, uh, to our sponsors, also Cindy.